This is the Microtech Ramlock Stitch. And this knife is very cool, but very dumb. This is probably the most hyped of the three initial releases from the Microtech or MSI Microtech Standard Issue Ramlock series, which is the series of production knives that they are doing in house in California with this Ramlock mechanism, which is their take on the Barlock. You can see here, they did it the same way that Benchmade did the Anthem, which is it's a flat spring instead of an Omega spring here. They pulled over the sort of grip pads from their automatics. And you can see here when it actuates there, compresses that spring, blade swings down, pops back out. Typical way a bar lock works. That's how Microtech implemented it. This way of doing it is almost certainly more complicated and more expensive, especially when Microtech overbuilds everything like they tend to do. Um, but it's also almost certainly tougher than an Omega spring. You know, just a flat spring like this is going to last longer and fatigue better than an Omega spring, which is a notoriously finicky way to provide, you know, spring resistance against a sliding bar like this. That's the way Microtech chose to do it across all of their models. And this one here is a collaboration with Sebastian Borka, who has made variants of the stitch both as highly sought after customs that command thousands of dollars in the custom market, though he's not quite as hot as he used to be there, and a few of Microtech's more popular automatic models. Their automatic stitch has been a very popular model for them for a very long time um, and often sells out. And this is the first version, the first manual version of the stitch that has ever come out from Microtech in a production format. And so for folks that have liked the stitch and or the de design of the stitch, because this is a stitch, you know, this is Sebastian's custom design taken to a production format. For folks that have liked the stitch and have never been able to or interested in affording a two to four thousand dollar custom and have never been able or wanted to carry an automatic this has been the first option they have had to get a stitch in their hands. And this knife is very cool, but it is very stupid. This is almost a four inch blade if you actually measure the blade. If I compare this to an actual four inch blade, you can see from the edge of the scale out to the tip, it's basically as long as the SOCOM Elite, which is a four inch blade. But this blade, as is typical for the stitch, has the world's largest choil. This is like a two finger choil here. It's just the way the stitch does it. The way the stitch is designed, you have this giant choil and you have this huge jimped thumb ram. And basically what that allows you to do is pinch this blade. You can pinch it like this, get your finger in there. You can pinch it like this, pinch on there. And then you've got this big, slightly swept Warncliffe, a big harpoon swedge across the top here, a, a, a huge chamfer on this opening hole, stonewash on the flats, or stonewash on the uh, blade grind, satin on the flats. If you actually look at it, this is, I mean, it's not that shallow, but this is a relatively shallow grind, despite how tall this blade is. Everything that's above here is purely aesthetic. This part down here is the only part that's actually ground to cut. 150 thousandths, like all the MSI Ramlock models. And then you look at how this whole knife is set up. And the first thing that you notice is how far this blade edge is below the pivot. If I pull out the amphibian here another one from the series, or I pull out the MSI here, another one from the series. You can see these are typical knives. The MSI Ramlock blade is a little bit below the pivot. Um, you know, it's pretty much aligned with your hand and with your fingers when you're cutting. <clears throat> this one here, it veers down a bit, sort of with the whole aesthetic where this whole thing is bowing out, but still it's not that much below the pivot, this blade edge. This edge is hanging out like a full inch below the pivot. And that means that when you are holding this and using this, 
the entire blade edge is below your knuckles. I can use this like a chef knife and put it pretty much down on the table and my knuckles will only barely hit the table because of how much space there is for the blade below the handle. Now, on one hand, that's theoretically cool because it does mean you can get a full grip and really push this entire blade into stuff. But if you think about it, how often are you actually trying to cut like that? You're usually trying to use a knife to cut into something like that. You're trying to either pull cut or pierce or push cut or slice across something. And what this hugely dropped edge tends to mean is that it just feels like the blade is a little bit further away from your hands than it typically would be if the edge was, say, like up here, somewhere where it was for a more typical knife. It also means that edge is not where you're expecting it to be. If you're just comparing this to, and we'll use it because it's also a sheep's foot design, to the MSI here, if you're used to using knives, this edge is where you expect it to be on a knife. <clears throat> this is relatively natural to use. This is not. This requires a learning curve to understand where the edge of that blade is. And even when you do understand where the edge of the blade is, it's just so far from your hands that, you know, I tried to use this to break down a bunch of boxes and to cut through some carpet. And as I'm cutting through the carpet and using this edge up here, the knife is trying to torque this way as the material resists it. And there's just more leverage from that material relative to my hand because where I'm actually cutting with it is quite far from where I'm actually gripping. And the further that edge is from your hands, the greater that leverage is. So this ends up just feeling like you're cutting with an edge that is never quite connected to the handle. It's weird. It's different and not in a great way. This edge and the whole design with it, with the giant choil, it's just awkward to cut with. Like there's really no other way that I can describe it that anytime I use this knife to actually cut stuff, I had to think and watch so much to see where that blade edge was. It's possible that once you learn how to use this, it ends up being a fantastic knife, but I'm not, I was not willing to put in the learning curve to relearn my intuition around where a knife's edge is relative to the handle to make this knife work. <clears throat> now, that's Borka's design. That's how the stitch is designed. And it is executed well. If this is what you're looking for, we went through the blade. The blade is immaculately finished. And by the way, the chamfers on the blade hole here, those chamfers are deeper than on the MSI standard issue. You can see those chamfers there, but they're pretty shallow on the MSI. They are deeper on the stitch here. This handle, you can get this handle in aluminum in G10. You can also get it in much more expensive materials. This version is flat and contoured as opposed to fluted or having some other texture on it. You can get lots of different textures on it. And it's just very nicely contoured. It's a nice, even rounding across the entire edge. You can see, you know, just look at how the scalloping on this G10, how the thickness of these, this G10 or the perceived thickness changes as you get across this handle. That is because of that contour. And by the way, talk about smart things. Got a little schmutz there. Smart things that MSI, that Microtech is doing with their design on these MSIs. Let's look at the pivot. So this is, and this is what a lot of makers would do. There's contouring right around this pivot. This G10 down here is much thinner than the G10 up here. And a lot of makers would just stick a pivot there and it would look off kilter. It would look, you know, it'd be fatter on one side or the other and they'd just say, okay, it's contoured, whatever. What Microtech has done is milled it so there is a flat radius around the pivot. So this pivot looks like it's screwed in flat and straight. And they've done it with a divot on the MSI and they've done it with a divot on the amphibian. It's less obvious on those than it is here because they've raised it, but that helps the design look clean and cohesive. And that helps hide the fact visually when you're looking at sideways that this contouring is making things sit at different heights. These pivot screws here are nicely recessed where you don't feel them as you run your finger across it. There is literally about as much jimping as you could possibly put on this back line here. There's jimping across the top of the blade. 
jimping across the entire back of the ramlock and a huge jimped geared back spacer across the entire back of this thing. And by the way, this is a six ounce knife. This is a heavy knife. It feels like a heavy knife. The balance is weird because of how big and thick this blade is. And that's part of the reason that they've got this giant back spacer is just to balance the weight of this blade so that the entire blade feels, you know, balance about where it should which is probably yeah your balance point is going to be yeah somewhere right around the pivot there i can't quite find it right now but it feels if if you just took this handle which by the way for how wild this blade is this is a pretty neutral handle it's got some design details up here but this is really it just it just sways down it's like a little banana shaped handle it sways down you, you hold it very naturally. If this had a normal or a more normal blade out the front, this is a nice handle. Feels nice in the hand. It's comfortable. The contouring is nice. It's nicely done. The ram lock is well implemented. The jimping is cool. Um, you know, it's not really useful. The gearing isn't really useful. This jimping isn't sharp enough to really grab you. It's pretty much aesthetic. But this handle is nice. The handle is simple. The handle is effective. It's comfortable in the hand when you bear down. And if there wasn't such an awkward blade out the front of it, this could be potentially a great user. You take this handle and you put a more normal blade on it. Maybe something that, you know, just comes across there or even comes down a little bit, but doesn't come this far below the handle. You get rid of this giant choil that puts almost an inch of blade before you actually get to the cutting edge. This handle is well designed. And by the way, again, all of this is taken from the stitch. It's not like he designed a new knife for this purpose. This is what stitches look like. And a lot of people love the design. So all, all Microtech and um, Microtech and Borka did was bring the stitch to this production format. And so really, but the fact is you are stuck with this blade. This blade is a selling point for a lot of people, but from a practical perspective, I found it really hard to use this blade for pretty much anything. It's big, it's thick. The action is fun. When you pull this down, I mean, boy oh boy, does it fall shut. As you would hope, given how much weight there is on this blade, particularly out to the tip, because you know, it's still pretty thick all the way out there. But you are buying this blade purely for the aesthetic. You are buying this blade because you want to get a manual Borka and at 300 bucks, which is what this retails for, and aluminum is about the same, it's by far the cheapest way you're going to have to get a Borka, especially if you need to have a manual. Um, I mean, it's not even close. It's one-tenth the price of a custom Borka. So if you want a Borka design and you don't really care whether your knife is practical or not, there are people that say that they use their Borka. There are people that say that this is a useful blade, blade design. I don't believe them. By the way, there's even gearing and jimping in this giant choil here. I found this knife so awkward to use every single time I picked it up that I carried it for like three days, used it for a handful of tasks, and pretty much gave up on it because there are very few times that I have had a clunkier experience with a knife than when I tried to use this one. Tried to use it for a bunch of different tasks. It was awkward and weird for every single one of them. And it really does come down to how unconventional this blade shape is. If you happen to know that you love this design and it works well for you, go for it. And if you love the Borka aesthetic, which is absolutely badass, this knife looks really cool. It looks about as mean as a knife can look. And Microtech's implementation of the Borka design aesthetic here is immaculate. And all the little Mi Microtech accoutrements, the way they've chamfered everything, the way that they have put the sort of ram lock in here, all the gearing, all the uh, jimping, all the custom hardware. You got a stamp click, clip here, but it works really well. It all just enhances the Borka experience, but know that you're buying it purely for the aesthetic and that there is no way that I can consider this knife more useful than something like a Spyderco Shaman, which is a knife that I'm not a big fan of, but has a similar overall profile in that it's a big knife with a contoured handle and a big fat blade coming out the front 
it's a thousand times more useful than this one. It's, it's, it actually feels useful, and this one feels like a burden every time you actually have to use it. So if you like it, buy it for the aesthetic. It's super cool. It brought a lot of attention, attention to this RAM lock design when it came out, and that's exactly what it was designed to do. And the fact that Microtech chose to bring this out at a $300 price point when they probably could have sold out selling it at $400 or $450 just because of how much people love Borka's design really shows what Microtech is trying to do with these RAM lock and with these Microtech standard issues or Microtech gear models, which is they are trying to take over this $200 to $400 segment of the market. They are trying to show that they can compete with the big American production companies and they can compete with Spyderco, they can complete, compete with Benchmade. This initial batch, the first three here, I've got separate reviews for these guys. This one's good with some flaws. It's questionable how useful it is, but it's cool. It's very microtech. This one is a phenomenal hard use knife, and this one is purely a showpiece. But they've got some cool knives here. They're all still very microtech. They're all still very overbuilt, very heavy duty, probably more heavy duty than they need to be. And they're more heavy duty than most people need for most everyday carry tasks. I don't think Microtech was trying to make real EDC knives with this first batch, unless they're talking, you know, EDC knives for people that live out on a ranch in Texas, which these two are actually pretty great for that. This one would still suck. But this is a great initial batch for Microtech, and they're doing really exciting things in the $200 to $300 price point. And the machining and detail they're putting into these is just fantastic. The implementation is really, really good. And when you look at and feel these blades, they are operating, you know, if I compare any of these to a PM2, the amount of work that went into both the design and the implementation here, these feel like knives that are at least $100 more expensive than this one. This feels simple and rudimentary. And by the way, these are aftermarket scales, so don't give those too much credit. This feels simple and rudimentary and basic when you compare it to these. And if you look at a Benchmade, which is about the same price, it's not even in competition. So, the, the ram lock stitch did exactly what it needed to, which is bring a lot of attention to the ram lock and get a lot of people very excited about it. And if you like the aesthetic and if you like what it does for you, go ahead and buy it. It'll be fun. It's a fun toy. It's fun to whip out. It's fun to play around with. Just don't expect to use it for much of anything practical. Hope you found that useful. Hope it wasn't a waste of your time. I will see you again soon.